Victim assistance is probably the, the biggest victory of the past week. We basically obtained some very strong language on victim assistance. This is obviously of crucial importance. We got an obligation to provide victim assistance. We got provisions that are specific, measurable, time-bound. This is crucial. This is going to ensure, hopefully, that something really happens on the ground. You see, my friend, 2004 got injury by Clusterable. Our friend here still injury by Clusterable. I don't want my kid become like me, become like my friends. One only has to talk to ordinary people and explain what's going on, and they immediately say, but this is appalling. Why are, we, why are we still using these? Why do we still have them? And if there was to be a, a referendum on such an issue, there'd be a 90, 95% majority against these weapons immediately. There is no doubt, in my mind, that cluster munitions have some military utility. I suppose you could say the same a poison gas. But we do ban some weapons. I believe we should be guided by the conviction that this is, above all, more than a military issue, it is a moral issue. Weapons that are inherently indiscriminate, whether by design or by effect, should have no place in this world of the 21st century. I think the hardest thing is, is the fact that the U.S. is the elephant not in the room here. And yet everybody does a ballet around that elephant. To appease the United States of America and put language in this treaty that weakens it in perpetuity is morally reprehensible. And we do know that the U.S. has been putting pressure. We know very well that uh, the Secretary of State, Ms. Rice, has been placing phone calls. We've been told by delegations, by government delegations. We know Mr. Bush himself has made some calls. That's fairly intense pressure. I mean, there's no question that the U.S. has been the biggest user of cluster munitions in the world. We believe that the U.S. is probably also the largest producer and exporter and stockpiler of the weapon. They acknowledge a stockpile of more than 720 million submunitions. 720 million they acknowledge. We think they're not counting everything. We think it's probably closer to 1 billion submunitions that the U.S. has in its arsenal. And this is just mind-boggling. Oftentimes what the, what the discussion evolves into is not really we have to have them for force protection or we have to have them for wide area effect, but the reality is the U.S. uses them so much because it's what they have in their arsenals. Eighty percent of their artillery and rocket systems, ground rocket systems, are full of cluster munitions. They made some really bad procurement decisions in the 1970s and 80s and early 90s, and uh, they've overloaded their arsenals with this. We say to them, that's not a very good reason for ignoring the humanitarian consequences of the weapon.